Good afternoon and welcome back to Stories with Don on this fine Friday. Today, again reading some Patrick F. McManus and the short story we're reading is called The Grasshopper Trap and it is in the collection entitled The Grasshopper Trap. So, trap. So, uh, this, this is the story that the book is named after. And unfortunately, again, there are not any pictures uh, but I think you'll be able to see this in your mind. I don't know that you could make a good picture of it that would uh, make sense. But here on the cover, they have kind of a picture of it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Of them using the grasshopper track. So that'll give you a, a foretaste of what's to come, maybe. The grasshopper trap. Wretch Sweeney and I were taking a lunch break from pheasant hunting and our backs propped against fence posts at the edge of a stubble field. Suddenly, Wretch's sandwich slipped from his fingers. Then he lunged forward onto his belly and began frantically slapping the ground with both hands. Had we purchased the sack lunches any place other than Greasy Gert's gas and grub, I might not have been so alarmed. Quick, tell me, I yelled at him. Was it the ham on rye or the egg salad? Rex got slowly to his feet. Dang, missed him. Who, I said, wondering about the possible hallucinogenic effects of egg salad. A grasshopper, he said, picking up the sandwich and dusting it off. Vegas dang grasshopper I've ever seen. The brookies up at the beaver pond wouldn't have been able to resist him. Oh, I said, a grasshopper. Yeah. Hoppers are probably the best brookie bait there is. Too bad they're so hard to catch. You'd think somebody would invent a machine for catching them. A grasshopper catching machine. The mere mention of such a contraption drew me back into the mists of time. Oh no, Wretch groaned. I hate it when you get drawn back into the mists of time. I'm going to take a nap. The mists cleared. I was a boy again, running, lunging, and careening about our back pasture with crazy Eddie Muldoon. The old woodsman, rancid crab tree, hunkered in the shade, shouting orders. There's a big one landed on that weed behind you, rancid yelled at me. Gold dang, you missed him. You got to be quick if you're going to catch hoppers. Listen to what I'm telling you now, or we're going to be too late to do any fishing. How many is you caught? Six altogether, Crazy Eddie said. But that's counting two that sneaked out of the jar when we were putting another one in. What are we going to do with three measly grasshoppers? Rancid yelped. You fellows just ain't quick enough. I held up the quart jar and peered in at the four measly grasshoppers. They stared back, their eyes filled with accusation. You'd think there'd be an easier way to catch hoppers, I said. Crazy Eddie looked at me. Say, I've got an idea. Forget it, I said. Already that summer, I'd had too many narrow escapes at the, as the result of Eddie's ideas. But this is a great idea, he cried. We can build a grasshopper trap. Rancid dismissed the idea with a wave of his hand. Wouldn't work. Ain't no way you could make a trap small enough to clamp on to a hopper's foot. Not that kind of trap, Eddie said. He then went on to explain his idea to Rancid and me. It was dumb. Probably the dumbest idea Eddie had ever had, and maybe even dangerous if the completed contraption bore any resemblance to Crazy Eddie's other inventions. I was thankful that for once, a mature adult was on hand to point out the risk and stupidity of such an idea. Sounds good to me, Ransom said. Let's go over to my place and build it. Ransom's place, occupying a ragged clearing in the woods at the foot of Sandy... Uh, the Rancid's place, occupying a ragged clearing in the woods at the foot of Big Sandy Mountain, 
consisted of a pine slab shack with a rusty stovepipe askew on the roof and various big game skulls, antlers, and moldering hides decorating the exterior walls. It was not unattractive. A bullet hole in the window had been preserved as a memento of the time an offhand shot had been fired from inside the shack at a bobcat prowling around the junk cars in the yard, the sneaky beast no doubt intent on stealing one of the wrecks. Contributing to the overall aesthetic effect, <clears throat> ghosts of slain skunks haunted the air of the Crabtree estate, effluvial evidence of their owner's vocation of trapping. The odor of skunk, however, seemed but a gentle wafting fragrance to anyone working in close proximity to Rancid, a situation in which I soon found myself. I struggled to hold in place a final piece of the grasshopper trap while the sweating old woodsman hovered above me, stretching and twisting strands of baling wire. Phew, I gasped. Getting tired? Nope. Phew -ee. How much longer? Just about got her done. There. Rancid stepped back, snapped his suspenders, and proudly surveyed the grasshopper trap. Now ain't that pretty. Super neat, cried Crazy Eddie. The grasshopper trap seemed to consist largely of baling wire, which held a legless chair to the right front fender of Rancid's old pickup truck. A gunny sack dangled limply from the end of a slender pole. A barrel hoop held the mouth of the sack open in the, matter, in the manner of an airport windsock. The pole was suspended with strands of baling wire from a superstructure of two-by-fours baling wired to the chair. You see how it works? Crazy Eddie asked me, apparently taking my silence to be the result of ignorance. The pickup drives along a road and one of us sits in the chair and works the pole so the gunny sack scoops up the grasshoppers from the weeds in the ditch. Get it? The guy in the chair? I get it. I get it. The three of us climbed into the pickup and went rattling off in search of a good grasshopper road. From long experience, I knew that Crazy Eddie would try to persuade me to take the first turn in the chair. After his invention proved safe, as his invention seldom did, he would then take his turn, but not this time. Presently, Eddie said to me, I'll bet this grasshopper trap will catch a whole lot more grasshoppers than we can ever use. I bet it too, Ransom said. In fact, I bet I could sell the extras, and I could build a pen out of wire screen to keep them in, and when a fisherman comes looking for bait, I could just net him out a dozen or so. Probably get a nickel apiece for him. Hot dang, that's a good idea. I might even get rich off and selling hoppers. How about me, Crazy Eddie said. The grasshopper track was my idea. And me, I said. I helped build it. The great grasshopper magnet turned his shrewd, beady capitalist eyes on us. We'll work something out, he said. We'll work something out. <laughs> we soon arrived at a rough, narrow road that wound along Sand Creek. Hordes of grasshoppers crackled and sizzled among dry weeds in the ditch. Here's the spot, Ransom said. Looks like the mother load of hoppers. Now who's going to be the first one to try out the trap? I could feel Crazy Eddie studying me out of the corner of his right eye. Gee, I don't know, he said. It's sure going to be a lot of fun sitting out there on the fender watching those old hoppers pour into the trap. He paused to check the effect on me, which was nil. Bouncing along out there, the wind blowing in your face, be just like a carnival ride, I bet. And say, Ransom said, Either of you two fellers know how to drive? Crazy Eddie and I looked at him. Why, sure I do, Eddie said. Of course, I'm not old enough to have my license yet. Hop dang, Rancid said. I'll try the hopper trap first, just to test her out. 
And don't worry none about not having a license, Eddie. There ain't going to be no policeman way out here in the dingles. Rancid gave Crazy Eddie a quick lesson on some of the nuances of driving the old truck. Just stomp down on this here knob if and you wants to go faster, or you can pull out this thing. Sometimes you got to pump up and down real fast on the brake pedal to get her to take hold. Now, she gets to jumping and jerking like she does sometimes. You can either do this or that. You know how to shift? Good. Rancid got out and Crazy Eddie slid over behind the steering wheel. One more thing, Rancid said. If and I waves my left hand, that means go faster. If and I waves my right, that means go slower. He then squirmed through the network of bailing wire and with much grunting and groaning, got himself seated in the tight confines of the rickety chair. Let her rip, he shouted. Crazy Eddie stretched to peer up over the dashboard while trying to reach the foot pedals on the floor. He pulled the gear shift down with a terrible grinding sound and the truck lurched forward. I was impressed. Gosh, I didn't know you knew how to drive, Eddie. Eddie's brow was furrowed on concentration as he wrestled the big steering wheel. Well, it ain't like I ever actually drove before. I just know how. I've watched my pa do it hundreds of times. There ain't much to it. To my surprise, the grasshopper trap worked wonderfully well. Eddie steered the truck along the edge of the road while Rancid raked the weeds with the grasshopper trap. We could see the hoppers pouring into it. Such was the initial success of the grasshopper trap that Rancid apparently decided he could easily double his profits by increasing the speed of the truck. Even though he was being bounced about a great deal, he waved his left hand. Crazy Eddie ground the truck into a higher gear. Would you pull that thing out there that makes the truck go faster? He said to me. My leg's getting tired of pressing down on the gas knob. I pulled out the thing on the dashboard. The truck leaped forward with a roar, sending Rancid ha Rancid's hat <laughs> sailing behind us. He hunched forward in the chair, his long hair streaming back. The grasshopper trap clipped madly along through the weeds, harvesting hoppers. Crazy Eddie's face beaded with sweat as he wrestled the steering wheel and strained to see over the dashboard. He's waving his left hand again, I said. He wants to go even faster. I couldn't believe the greed of the man. Okay, Eddie said, grinding into the next gear. Pull that thing on the dashboard all the way out. Wow, I didn't know this old truck could go so fast. Now what's Rancid want? Careful, Eddie, we're getting into the ditch on the side. Watch out for those thorn apples. The thorn apples raked the side of the truck. We bounced over several large rocks, ricocheted off a tree, hit a culvert, and landed back on the road. Okay, okay, stop yelling, Crazy Eddie said. I got her back on the road, didn't I? Rancid's waving both arms, both hands now. What do you think that means? I don't know. I wish he'd make up his mind. Maybe he's trying to signal we're coming to Dead Man's Hill. Heck, I know that. It's all right, I yell out the window to Rancid. Eddie knows about the hill. Now what's he trying to do, Eddie said. Rancid had turned into a large bouncing blur on the right front fender. I could tell that his antics were getting on Eddie's nerves. He's just showing off, I said, but he'd better stop fooling around and sit back down in that chair because we're coming to the hill. Oh no, he let the grasshopper trap pole get broken off. What's he thinking of? If that don't beat all, Eddie said. Well, I guess we'll just have to stop. I thought you were going to stop, Eddie. I'm trying to. Now, which one of these things did he say was the break? We passed the sheriff's car, <laughs> going in the opposite direction halfway down the hill, but not by much. Even so, there wouldn't have been any problem, 
if we hadn't been passing a wagon load of hay at the same time. The sheriff whipped his car around and came after us, red light flashing and siren wailing. As Eddie said later, it sort of scared him. What do you suppose he wants? Eddie asked. Beats me, I said, tossing a bunch of hay out the window. Maybe he's never seen a grasshopper trap before. The truck stalled on the uphill grade on the other side of the Sand Creek Bridge. The sheriff pulled in ahead of us and slid to a stop. We got out of the truck and walked over to find out what he wanted. The sheriff was grim and sweaty and looked tired. What you boys doing driving that truck? He growled. Then he noticed Rancid, still perched in the tangle of baling wire on the fender. The grasshopper magnet was covered with dust, hay, weeds, and splattered bugs, some of which may have been grasshoppers. He had a comical expression on his face. I hoped he wasn't thinking about getting off one of his jokes, because the sheriff didn't seem to be in the mood for it. Crabtree? The sheriff said. Is that you? My fuss from from grasshoppers. Um, Rancid sputtered. Watch your language, Crabtree, the sheriff snapped. Young boys are present. Crazy Eddie interrupted. It's all real simple, Sheriff. You see, it's a grasshopper trap. Rancid's going to catch these grasshoppers with it, and we'll put them in a pen and sell them for a nickel apiece and get rich and... The sheriff sagged. Wearily, he held up his hand for Eddie to stop. Please, don't explain it to me, son, he said. I don't want to hear. The sheriff harangued Rancid for a couple of minutes and then drove off, shaking his head. Rancid raised a fist and shook it at Crazy Eddie. Why didn't you slow down when I waved my right hand at you? He yelled. Because that's your left, Eddie said. It is, Rancid said. I always thought that was my right. You sure about that? As we were driving home, I tried to cheer up the old woodsman. Look at it this way, Rancid. At least we know the grasshopper trap works. Don't talk to me about it. I held up the grasshopper trap's gunny sack, which appeared to have been run over at least twice. I think we might be able to use some of these grasshoppers to go fishing. Rance had raised an eyebrow. You mean some of them hoppers ain't squished? Well, no, they're all squished, I said, but we could make little balls of grasshopper paste and put them on our hooks. At that moment, I returned from the mists of time to the stubble field, where Wretch Sweeney was just waking up from his nap. Wretch blinked and yawned. You ready to do some more hunting? Yeah, I said, but first let me ask you something. Can you imagine a grown man going berserk just because someone suggested fishing with balls of grasshopper paste? And that's the end of the story of the grasshopper trap. Hope you enjoyed it. May you be well. May God bless you. Goodbye.